All right, in this video, we're going to check out picking out our drums for our drum kit. There are many ways to get this done, and we're going to check out most of the key ones right now. The quickest and easiest way to do this is to use the default drum kits or the preset drum kits, which can be found right here in the default drop down. So, drums and mixer presets. So, what this means is it's going to not only change the drum kit, but also change the mixer settings, add effects if any effects are added, and things of that nature. Clean kits won't have anything done to the mixer. So, if I just go ahead and choose maybe the Ludwig Classic Default, we'll let that load up over here, and you'll see the RAM being added to the RAM slider over here or the RAM indicator. So you're going to want to let that happen. And as you can see, this is a full drum kit, so it's going to be quite heavy on RAM. So as you can see here, we got about two and a half gigabytes of RAM loaded. But man, do those drums sound spectacular. So these are the default clean ones. And as I said before, if you jump over to the mixer here, you'll see that nothing has been manipulated. Some of the levels have been, and that is perfectly okay, but there aren't any effects on any of the channels. It's also very handy because they do have sub buses over here for the kick, the snare, the toms, the hats. And this is just saves you a lot of work from having to do the routing later on. Now, some of these other defaults down here are presets that have effects and everything already added to them. If we come to Experimental Electronica and just go ahead and choose Buried, for example, it actually loaded very quickly. And there's actually not a lot going on, but there is a compressor on the master channel. Also, you'll notice that there aren't any buses as well. So if we jump back into the drums, So maybe that wasn't the best example for something crazy. Let's jump into hip hop and archetype. Jump back into the mixer. You'll see here we've got a lot more going on. We've got bus sends. We've got uh, effects. We've really got so much happening here. And they all just sound phenomenal, by the way, if we jump back in. Let's go ahead and load up a groove. So that's what that one sounds like. What I'm going to do is actually jump back into a default clean uh, kit. Let's go Yamaha. Okay, so now that we have this kit loaded, and you'll notice it's about two gigabytes of RAM loaded. Now, there are other ways to manipulate and change one drum at a time. So if I come over here to the snare, uh, not only can I change the snare by right clicking and then choosing a different snare. I can also choose how the snare are being, are being hit. Uh, we also have other ways of it being hit, like brushes, for example. And we also have the Search for Instrument browser. If I click this or hit Control-R, now we can really get in and start boiling down exactly what we're looking for in terms of snares. As you click them, you'll hear the preview. And what I can do is replace the snare, or I can add it to a stack or in fact I can add it as a new instrument and stacking and a new instrument are completely different a stack is going to have the old snare and the new snare tr be triggered by the same MIDI note a new instrument is going to give that new snare its own MIDI note inside of your program so you want to be aware of that distinction when you're choosing these so I'm just going to go ahead and oh we also have the ability to replace any other instrument with the snare that we've chosen right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and stack without closing. It just means it's not going to close this window so we can continue to browse and search if we wanted to and make any other changes from here. I'm going to go ahead and close out. This is the stack. It's just going to trigger both of those snare samples at the same time and we can choose one or the other and manipulate the property boxes for each one. We can also choose whatever instrument from right here. So we can either click on an instrument or actually choose it from right here if I go to kick for example and then we can choose from this drop down what type of kick it is and again we can go to search for instrument and we have all of our choices as well we also have some more uh, options here we can add stacks and this is these are the different articulations for whatever instrument we have selected here it's the kick so we have an open and hit 
uh, articulations. We can also import a file if we wanted to. We've already covered that and stacking in a separate video, so check that video if you want to learn how to do that. It's very, very simple. You can either use it right here. This will open up a browser and you can import whatever file you want. It doesn't even have to be a drum if you don't want it to be. Uh, you can get really creative, or you can actually drag and drop it right on top of whatever instrument you want that to be a part of. And when you do that, you can replace or stack and these types of things. But again, check out that video if you want to learn more. If you want to remove any instrument, we can just hit the Remove Instrument button. And we also have the ability to save as a user instrument. So if we've imported something or manipulated something and we want to save it to the library, we can do it right there. And another thing, if let's say I am writing my piece of music, let's see what we've got going on. So let's say I'm not going to be using these toms. It's a good idea to get rid of them. So I would right click, go to more, and then remove. And that way we're going to get a decrease in RAM. It's just much easier that way uh, to save on RAM because these kits can get quite uh, heavy on RAM, especially something like this symbol right here. If you come into the articulation menu, look how many different articulations we have. And we can turn them off. Sequence hits, if I turn it off, if you watch the RAM meter, we lose that from RAM. It's actually not a lot, it's a couple, uh, it's like 20 megabytes, but we can also turn on other ones and really start going crazy. And this is gonna be helpful if you're actually gonna use them, but if you're not gonna use them, there's really no reason to have them on. If we want to select all the articulations for manipulation with the property boxes, we just hit select all and you'll see that it says all articulations and we have 13 of 27 loaded. So that gives you a good indication of what's going on inside of there without having to click the drop down. We can also add instruments over here and remember adding an instrument is different than making a stack. If you want to import audio here, this is going to add it to its own MIDI channel and that's different than right clicking more and then importing a file here. This is going to make a stack and this is going to make its own instrument. So you want to be careful again with that distinction and what you're trying to do inside of your project. So that's pretty much all of the ways you can manipulate your drum kit. Again, if you're new to Spirit Drummer, I highly suggest going through some of these presets and finding one close to what you're looking for and then maybe changing one or two drums. But there's no reason you can't get in and make your own custom kit from start to finish, top to bottom, and then save it into your library for future use. As you can see right here in the part presets, we can actually load an empty kit which is going to give us full customizability for whatever we want to use and maybe lessen the distractions of other preloaded drums. Right click. <laughs> they just sound so good. So anyway, that's how you start building your own kit or manipulating other kits. Let's move on to the next video.